Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Will Gerling. I am a sports and performance nutritionist and I'm here to talk to you today about travel and performance and hygiene and how you can manage to get yourself to your race in the perfect condition. Today's study is by Halson and Burkettel, 2019, super recent. It's not a specific study, it is a review of current research out there to give recommendations to you about what you can do to stay healthy when you're traveling for your races. If you're an Ironman, a triathlete, a cyclist, wherever you're going to the tap, you're going to um, Ironman, Lanzarote, Argentina, all these places, you're going to the Worlds in Taupo in New Zealand, uh, this year, there's loads of things that can come up. So let's get into what we're gonna be looking at. We're gonna be looking at melatonin, caffeine, travel hygiene, and eating, right? Um, let's start with the first one. Melatonin. Um, melatonin has been shown to really improve your ability to fall asleep. And if you're going eastwards, uh, they're obviously ahead in time, they'll be going to bed earlier, so taking that melatonin is going to improve your ability to fall asleep on the plane and start adjusting already. The recommendation is about 2-8 to eight milligrams. The only problem with it is that you can only get it over the counter in America, Canada, Europe, the UK, you have to get a prescription. So there are herbal sources, but there is a study that has shown there's a huge variance in herbal sources of melatonin ranging from 18 to 478% of the actual amount stated, which is huge. And there was also added other minerals and um, bits like serotonin itself in them. So um, I wouldn't get those. I would look at something that's batch tested and something like tart cherry juice, which has a stated amount of melatonin in it. And if it's batch tested, it is what it says on the tin. Our next section is caffeine. Ooh, coffee, all right. Um, in Caffeine by Landolt et al, 2018, um, we saw that 200 milligrams on a flight can help delay the melatonin that you produce endogenously within you, and it will keep you up for longer. That's obvious, caffeine keeps you awake. Um, but once again, with the time zone, do you need to be staying awake? Then cool, caffeine's gonna help that. There's also really cool research showing that if you take 300 milligrams a day, that's slow releasing in the morning um, at 8 a.m., then that will help keep you alert and awake during the day and then falling asleep when you're meant to at night rather than feeling very tired and fatigued during the day. This is ideal if your flight is greater than five hours away and that you really need to adjust to a time period in a short period of time. So if it's, you know, you've got five days to get yourself into the time zone, sleeping better and so on, then taking something like that or just normal caffeine through the day in the morning is gonna help you then steadily get into that uh, sleep pattern quicker. Our next one is travel hygiene. Let's look at this. So here we have by Berman et al, 2017, that probiotics and multi-train uh, chain probiotics will improve your gut uh, bacteria and help prevent against antigens and issues that can potentially cause illness. And I did a video just the other day about uh, probiotics, so check that one out and have a little listen to that, all right? We've also seen that with flights greater than five hours that you have an a massive two to three fold increase in the incidence of upper respiratory tract infections and gastro related um, infections. And you also see a suppression or depression in your immunity. So your ability to deal with illness is reduced, which is massive. And a lot of this is actually reduced, uh, caused by the fact that you're in a small confined area and playing with lots of other people who may be ill. There's lots of people touching the things that you've been on and that the stress related with travel is really huge from a physical level and that opens you up to more infection as well. My recommendation for you based upon this is to take antibacterial wipes and to wipe down your whole area. 
that's right, that's how you wipe things down. <laughs> Your whole, whole seating area, clean everything that you're gonna to be touching regularly. I would also have chewing gum or citrus juice in your water to increase saliva production because within our saliva we have something called IgA which is going to help defend against bacteria, airborne bacteria. What do I really think? These are all things that I do with my athletes anyway. Other things that you should be looking at and so is the chewing gum and the citrus juice, cleaning your area down, melatonin and caffeine, these are all things that I I do with my athletes already. My recommendation would also be to maybe start going to bed a little bit earlier if you're flying eastward and you'll just adjust a little bit quicker. So if you're flying that way. There's no real limitation in this study. It's a review of current research out there and to create recommendations. I'm gonna put in the comment box down below or you know the, the, the about of this video, my own recommendations for you to help against food-based bacteria in a different country. I'm going to drop that down below, so check that out. When you're going to races abroad, it's so important that you practice your pre-race food to be similar to where you're going to be. It's really important that you practice what's going to be out there. So maybe check out the hotel that you're staying at and the food that's available for that for breakfast or take your own stuff so you're prepared you know it's really easy to take oats or something like this i know i've had some athletes take snack packs and stuff like that and making sure that's really dialed in that you're not opening yourself up to having strange food that you're not used to on race day if you enjoyed today's video drop a like as well and i look forward to sending you another one soon bye